Hold on, wait, before- wait, what does this even mean? Maybe this is their strategy, add in a main character for a game that's really controversial, and that way it'll distract you from the fact that you're trying to get people to spend $130 for their fucking game. Asmongold called out Assassin's Creed Shadows for their pricing. It's, a, it's like the leftist meme meme. Can somebody break this one down for me? No one complains about cultural appropriation when it's white people. Okay, I don't think I've seen all these movies or shows, but like, I'm guessing this is probably a black guy in Shogun, huh? I'm guessing. For the, for the samurai movie, The Last Samurai, that was the whole point, right? Like the movie is about a white guy that gets captured. It's not like they just have a white samurai, right? It, like it's, that's the point of the fucking movie. No, it's AC. Oh, is this Armored Core? Oh, Assassin's Creed. Oh, this is the Assassin's Creed. Okay, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck these two are. I don't know what... Fuck. Video games look like real life. It's from the new Assassin's Creed game. The Black Samurai existed. I've read somewhere over that, because it happened a lot with the uh, Shogun shit, where people got mad about the... And apparently there were some samurai that... I don't know where the fuck they came from. I don't know. And I also don't really give a fuck. Actually, fuck. I'll defend the for this one time, okay? And I think if you care about this a lot, you probably are racist, but I'll give you the non-racist defense. Actually, um, for, uh, for Assassin's Creed, don't they actually try really, really hard to be, um, to be, like, accurate historically? I've never played a single one of these fucking games, but I feel like I watched, oh, people are saying no. Oh, okay, maybe it doesn't matter at all then, never mind. I feel, I, I'm assuming that because I feel like I watched a video, or maybe I read a fucking Reddit post, where apparently in Assassin's Creed, they tried, um, they modeled the inside of the, um, what was that big church that burned down in fucking f f France? What am I thinking of? My God. The Notre Dame. Um, w apparently they like modeled the inside of this like so much that the, uh, when they had to go and rebuild it or rebuild parts of it after the uh, fire, they were able to use some of the footage that the robots had captured for the Assassin's Creed shit. Is that true? Or is this just like a Reddit meme that wasn't true at all? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Did I make this up? You know, it's everybody's retarded. The environments are incredibly accurate. It's the story is not. They're very accurate with architecture, but history and characters not so much. Okay. Talked about this a little early, but it is fascinating. Uh, there is. Wait, they are coping. Assassin's Creed is some of the most historically accurate set pieces. Okay, so the the setting and everything is really accurate, but then they like add or invent or be flexible or creative with the stories. I guess. A video game, Assassin's Creed 3D, that maps of Notre Dame in enormous detail uh, of the cathedral. The Game World News Entertainment host, uh, Tian Wang, uh, says it's obviously going to be very helpful in trying to retrace what might have been there and what isn't there or they can't account for. Uh, the detail on this game, by almost all accounts, Dan, is remarkable. Do you, do you know much about it? Yeah, it's really fascinating. What is this thing? This is awesome. <laughs> this is like something I would wear. <laughs> what, is, what is this thing? Is he an Assassin's Creed? It is historically accurate. You, is that Yusuke? Y-A-S-U-K-E was a real samurai. It's interesting to see people call it woke, seeing that it began... Being developed 10 years ago. Okay. This is just a cardigan. Oh. Notre Dame. Please collab with this guy to dress you. Die workwear. Did I read so many threads by this guy? I'm obsessed with his. He gives like a really interesting breakdown of, although I feel like as a person that knows nothing about fashion whatsoever, I feel like this guy leans really hard into like cultural messaging when it comes to clothing. I don't know how much that matters for the average person or how important it is, but um, his threads of... um where he does like the animals. I don't know why, it's just, it's, there is a lot of interesting content. Um, I think he used the, is it the Hugo Boss Bear? And then he does sometimes like Kermit the Frog. Uh, yeah, it's just very, very interesting threads talking about fashion. Where he goes through and he talks about like why suits, why different things work, why things don't work. Um, this thread was okay. I didn't like, uh, well, I mean, no, it was fine. The Kermit the Frog one was really interesting, I thought, but here, follow him if you want. Oh, Piers Morgan. That was the one, I think. This guy puts way more work into thinking about fucking fashion or clothes than I could have ever imagined, but... Um, doesn't it feel like he's making shit up half the time? I thought that the other day, because I, um, I was going back and I was like, wait, could this guy literally say anything and I would believe it? <laughs> because I'm not, now I'm not sure. Oh, was it, it was this one. Someone from Piers Morgan's staff asked if I would come, if I would like to come on to Piers' show, Piers Morgan Uncensored, to talk about the state of his attire. Since he invited feedback, I thought I'd do a thread comparing his style to menswear icon Kermit the Frog. Let's start with the basics. The core of any outfit is fit and silhouette. Piers' suit jackets often have lapels that buckle away from his chest and a collar that floats from his neck. This suggests his jackets may be too small. 
No such issues for Kermit the Frog. His clothes hang beautifully and smoothly while still giving a distinctive, flattering silhouette. Pierre knows that he looks best in a tailored jacket, so he wears them to social functions. However, he relies too much on formal tailoring, such as dark worsted suits in sober colors. This puts him in a somewhat awkward position of trying to find ways to dress them down. He knows that people at the event may not be wearing suits, but he also doesn't know what else to wear, so he ditches the tie or wears a suit jacket with jeans to look casual. A dark worsted suit without a tie is like the night sky without stars. Kermit the Frog understands this, so he always makes sure he has something, sheen, color, or pattern, between his jacket's front edges. This adds a bit of visual interest to what's a very sober ensemble. Kermit also knows that if he doesn't want to wear a tie, he should opt for a more casual top. He often reaches for a charcoal turtleneck. Since turtlenecks aren't meant to be worn with ties, he doesn't look like he's missing something. Since Pierre seemingly only has dark worsted suits in colors such as black, navy, or gray, he often looks like he's just come out of a business meeting, even when he's at social functions. No such issue for Kermit the Frog. He has a wider variety of options, such as tweeds, checked sports coats, uh, and casual suits made from materials like linen and available in colors like cream. This allows him to look put together without seeming corporate. For a more casual look, Pierce often wears these plain, smooth merino sweaters in solid colors. These sweaters can sometimes be fine under a tailored jacket, but on their own, they lack something. No such issue for Kermit the Frog. He knows that if you're going to wear a sweater on its own, the knit needs something like a pattern or texture to make it interesting. Good options include spongy Shetlands, chunky errands, uh, fair aisles, and ribbed shaker knits. The biggest issue with Pierce's casual wear is that it has no direction. It's sort of a mismatch of generic uh, clothes, polos and button-up shirts with pre-washed blue jeans, or flat front beige chinos, sometimes layered with plain merino sweater. When he layers, the outfits lack cultural meaning or coherency. He talks about this a lot. He's very big on like clothing culture. Uh, E.g. a top coat with polo and sweatpants. When he tries to look a bit cooler, he thinks only in terms of single items. E.g. the black dress shirts popular with divorced men hitting the club. Kermit doesn't think of outfits in parts or as a pseudoscience, e.g. black goes with blue, but as cultural language. He thinks of the total outfit and what it conveys, the rebel look with a biker jacket and jeans, or the time he wore white suits with gold chains in the 70s. Is that a correct use of e.g.? Um, e.g. means for example. I.e. means such as, I think, right? Maybe? I don't know. Is it true that one out of every 100 shirt of the one you're wearing have the N-word printed somewhere on the shirt? No, common misconception, though. Um, it's one out of 100 has the N-word printed on the front. All of them have the N-word printed somewhere. Most of them are on the inside. Here we see him taking chances with a beautifully patterned serape or serape and a safari-worn jacket with a neckerchief and beret. Or I might mean in other words, maybe. Men often struggle with this because their identity may be rooted in just being a normal dude, so they see any outfit that deviates from some middle-class uniform as cosplay. But do you think a frog actually herds cattle? By thinking of clothes as cultural language, Kermit is able to put together cooler outfits. Here, he's channeling 1980s Miami Vice energy with a lightweight jacket, pink mock neck, striped pants, white horsebit loafers, and giant sunglasses. Compare these two outfits. Pierre's black polo with checkered, uh, with checked knee-length shorts and bad sneakers says nothing, but Kermit's cargo shorts with an Aloha shirt, fishing bag, and straw hat says, I'm a mid-century sportsman on vacation. To develop your visual vocabulary, you have to pay attention to culture. Think about how clothes were worn in the past by various cultural groups. Here we see all of the references for Kermit's outfit above. You can see how the same language is channeled in I'm Leon Dor's spring slash summer lookbook. The outfit on the right is a little better because the man is wearing a jacket. Outfits often need a finishing layer, but perhaps Kermit was hot that day. We see the same issue here. Pierce is wearing a slim, shapeless top coat with a stretched out V-neck, a white dress shirt, a scarf, bad jeans, and suede loafers. Confusing, no cultural message, aesthetically unappealing. Like, if I were to look at somebody like this, I would have no idea. I, don't, I still am not sure. Is there actually anything wrong with this? I have no fucking idea. 
Do you think things like an eye for aesthetic can be learned? Absolutely. You just have to practice it. You have to like apply it and practice it and use it. And eventually you develop like, you'll develop it. Again, the same issue here. Piers is wearing generic clothes, no cultural message, lack of a finishing layer, visually uninteresting. Kermit improves on this by aligning the materials, ch uh, chambray with denim, and using an open shirt as a lightweight layer. Has a workwear vibe. Finally, Kermit knows that dinner suits, aka tuxedos, should be worn with black bow ties made from the same material as the jacket's facings, not long black ties, which should be reserved for business meetings, court appearances, and funerals. Piers looks best on his TV show, where he employs a visual language he knows. Dark suit, light shirt, dark tie. He just needs to learn a few more languages for when he's off the show and perhaps pay attention to Kermit the Frog. That's cute. I like that it ends with like a compliment as well. And then it show and it's a compliment that also brings together like his whole point. Like Piers looks best here, but it's because he understands the cultural language of what he's trying to convey. Um, so he has the capability of doing it. He just needs to um, expand that to a few more things. I thought, I thought this was a cute thread. A lot of this guy's commentary on fashion stuff is really interesting, but way, way past anything I'm aware of.